with the ACC Coastal Division Championship on the line in Charlottesville. Thanksgiving Friday. Big crowd. Hokies, Cavaliers. Virginia Tech won the toss. They have deferred. So the Cavaliers will have the ball first. Joe Reed, one of the most dangerous kick return men in the country, does not have a chance to return this kick. So the Virginia offense comes on the field. Our Thanksgiving edition of Kark after kick. Let's go down to Paul Carcaterra. You can feel the stakes are higher than normal in this one, Dave. And there is a blatant dislike between these two teams. Virginia Tech quarterback Hendon Hooker told me that they are taught to hate Virginia. The problem is for his defense today, they have to deal with Bryce Perkins. He's a complete program changer. Bronco Mendenhall said it best to me. He's almost a one-man band. He's been gasoline on the acceleration of this program. It's a good way to put it. There may not be a single player in college football who is more important to his offense than Bryce Perkins, who is incomplete on his first pass attempt of the day. Bryce Perkins is really a tremendous player. And what he does is he extends plays with his feet. It really, UVA plays a wildcat type of offense with a quarterback that can throw the ball. That's how significant he is to this offense. We'll see him throw it. We'll see him run it. He's going to play fake here and go down. Man, he just got swarmed. And that's the Virginia Tech defense that you've been talking about here already today. The Hokies have had this remarkable turnaround in season led by Bud Foster's defense. Well, they're an aggressive defense, and they're going to bring guys from all over the field. They're going to bring linebackers. They're going to bring safeties. They're going to bring corners. They're going to try to fill gaps here today so that Bryce can't find lanes with which he can escape and make plays downfield. And you saw that on that play right there. So the four-yard loss, it's third and long, not the way that Virginia wanted to start this game on offense. We'll see Perkins in the shotgun. Now he's going to take off. That looked like a design run, and Perkins is going to get the first down. You're going to see this out of Bryce Perkins a lot today. He'll drop back, and if, any, if nothing's there, then you're going to see designed quarterback draw. So he's got the option to throw it down the field, and he's got the option to run it if there's nothing there. And watch Bryce get out and go. He's got open field ability. He's got speed. He's got size. He's got strength. But they don't want to live in third and long. That was a quick decision. He took one look downfield and then decided to go, and it was a good decision. Perkins now on the move, dumps it short with the big hit, incomplete. Jamari Connor, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, he has become one of the big playmakers on this Virginia Tech defense. This Virginia Tech defense is extremely physical at all positions. They've got a big secondary. they got four of their players in the secondary that weigh over 200 pounds, and, and that's big for the college level. And they're not afraid to get up and press you on the outside and play physical inside. It's a fun defense to watch. It's kind of always been how that man has designed his defense, and it's another storyline today. It is Bud Foster's last regular season game as the defensive coordinator, one of the great assistant coaches in the country, one of the great football coaches over the last many decades. Perkins in the pocket, shows off that arm strength, but the ball was not caught, incomplete. So third down and long once again. These are tough situations, Virginia, to be in because Bud Foster now has his whole playbook open. He can sit back in zone, he can play man combination coverages, or he can decide to pressure Bryce Perkins. And if you're Bud Foster in Virginia Tech, after the way that first third down conversion went, do you have to have somebody who is basically on top of Perkins? We'll see, Hokies almost yeah. jumped off. Yeah, they were gonna bring it there. They were gonna bring Ashby. Ashby was gonna come off the edge. Let's see if they change their coverage. It looks like they did. Richard Ashby, who today is one of two Virginia Tech players wearing the honored number 25. Perkins on the look like almost the same play, and nobody there once again. Perkins into Virginia Tech territory, a second consecutive third and long conversion with his speed. Well, that once again looked like he had the option to throw it, but you'll watch the design quarterback draw late with the lead blocker and he gets over field. Virginia Tech has to stay in their rush lanes. They've got to put dots on him. They can't void areas where he can exploit them down the field with his legs. Third and 14, he got 19. Third and 10, he got 16. 
And so now first down in Virginia Tech territory a handoff straight ahead and a nice productive run Wayne Talapapa who missed last week with the carry Bryce Perkins Jim's been telling his story already the senior playing his final regular season game with the Cav great football family his dad great player at Arizona State his uncle longtime NFL career his brother Paul currently playing in the NFL you coached him at UCLA and you mentioned the circuitous route to this campus in Charlottesville he has changed the Virginia program there were a lot of people who thought hey great athlete not a quarterback he has proven everybody wrong he play fakes and is on the move again there goes number three Bryce Perkins out into the open cuts it back touchdown Virginia And that drive was almost all number three. It was all number three. Two great third down and long conversions with his legs. And then the designed quarterback run there where we get lead blockers out in front and then him breaking tackles and cutting back and showing his dynamic running ability in the open field. So the extra point with Brian Delaney and he hooked that one. It is no good. Well, those can come back to haunt you in a game like this. So a little sour note at the end of a very positive start for Virginia, and no surprise the guy was leading the way. No, this is Bryce Perkins. He's a great player, great player. In nine straight quarters, 32 straight offensive possessions for their opponents. First possession of this rivalry game, and Bryce Perkins 70 rush yards all on his own. The extra point was missed. Brian Delaney will kick it deep. The Hokies, after the touchback, will come onto the field for the first time. And a guy who has really helped change this season for Virginia Tech, Hendon Hooker, the sophomore. He is undefeated as a starting quarterback for the Hokies. He was a great all-around athlete at Dudley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina. All-time leading passer, great basketball player as well. His dad was a heck of a quarterback at North Carolina A&T. He is in the MEAC Hall of Fame. 6-0. They have not lost with Hendon Hooker as their starting quarterback. The one loss in these last couple months was at Notre Dame. He did not play. So Hendon Hooker on the field for the first time as the starter in this Commonwealth Cup rivalry. And a pass fake. He will go down. Held onto the ball and he gets sacked by Noah Taylor. Noah Taylor comes scot free off the edge. And one of the things to watch today is the way that Virginia uses their linebackers. Look at 14, Taylor off the edge. Just shows great quickness. He's got great length. Tremendous play. I'm excited to see how these Virginia linebackers are used today. You see him, Hooker now, he's out in space now. So he rushes, now he covers. They do a lot of great things with their linebackers. From the shotgun, a little fake pitch, and that was effective. It got the defense looking the other way. Hooker, who is a good running quarterback, maybe not quite as big and strong, as powerful as Bryce Perkins, but the running game for Hooker has been a big part of their offense. One of the things that Hooker does so well is protect the football. He, he's 10 touchdown passes. He has not yet turned it over. When you're playing defense the way Virginia Tech's playing defense, if you could protect the ball on offense and not give a team field position, it's a recipe for success. So they got 14 yards, but they still have three to go on third down. Hooker, another design quarterback run. I guess we're going to see a lot of that on both sides. Nowhere, though, for Hooker to go and Eli Handback, who maybe has been the most important player on the Virginia defense all season long with the third down stuff. Eli Handback is a space eater inside. And you watch him work off of the blocks there, come down the line of scrimmage and make a tremendous play. Great lateral movement right there by Handback. Well, we asked Nick Howell, their defensive coordinator, who's been your MVP this year? And that's the guy that he pointed out. He's been our best, most consistent player. Booming punt taken by Billy Kemp inside the 20, and he'll get outside the 20 to about the 23. Timeout here in Charlottesville.
Well, they started early on Thanksgiving Friday here in Charlottesville. You could not ask for a more gorgeous day at Scott Stadium on the campus of the University of Virginia. And the Cavaliers off to a tremendous start in this rivalry game. Virginia Tech, 32 straight possessions they had held their opponents without a point going back two-plus games. First time the Cavaliers had the ball. Bryce Perkins did almost all of it on his own, but he went right down the field and punched it in. 6 nothing Virginia. They get the ball for the second time. Still early in this one. A long way to go. But the Hokies defense is going to have to figure out how to stop number three. Bud just changed the defensive call. You're going to see a lot of that. Perkins will give it. And Talapapa had nowhere to go. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. When you have a smart defense like Virginia Tech has, an experienced defense, a defense that plays with a lot of confidence, when a, a coordinator like, like Bud Foster sees something from the sideline that sparks a, a, a clue, he can change the call and they can all get it. You saw it on that play right there. This is an experienced group. Young, but experienced. Second and 10. Papa alongside Perkins who's in the pocket to throw and is incomplete. So we have not had a pass completion, but there is a penalty flag. Billy Kemp was held up there. I think they're going to get the Hokies defense for that one. Pass interference. Defense number 28. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Part of this ACC crew on Thanksgiving Friday. Jermaine Waller's really been playing well. Both the cornerbacks for Virginia Tech have been playing well. And we figure, Jim, that they're going to be asked to basically handle their business on their own. Justin Fuente not very happy with that penalty call. He thought it was an uncatchable ball, but there was a hold out there. And you're right, the corners are going to have to play lockdown so they can take the other nine and concentrate on stopping Bryce Perkins. Four receivers and more of a pistol type look for Virginia from their own 39. And there's the first completion to the tight end, Tanner Cowley. He's become a good player for this UVA offense. Short gain on first down. I like Cowley. Cowley gives him a lot of versatility. You'll see him line up in the typical tight end position. You'll see him line up in the backfield, split out like that. They can run some bubbles to him. And that was a play where Bryce had a chance to throw it to the X receiver or run it. And he's so smart working through his progressions that he was able to get to Cowley and pick up a few yards. So second down. Perkins this time throws it in the opposite direction a catch an immediate open field tackle by the free safety divine Diablo and Virginia Tech stopped the Cavaliers a couple yards short of the first down. That's what what Perkins does best is he, is he runs the ball extends the play with his legs and then he throws it in between the numbers within 10 yards with tremendous accuracy and he makes great decisions and quick decisions. So now they get themselves into a third and short. This is advantage Virginia. Third and long was no problem for the Cavaliers. Sure the first possession, third and two. Perkins stepped up just a little bit, getting ready to take the snap. He does. Looking to throw the ball, and he gets drilled as he throws it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Virginia Tech. Coming the other way, down the sideline. And the cut back inside by Chamari Connor. And Perkins is slow to get up. There is a flag during the return, I believe. In fact, there are three flags on the field. Perkins got absolutely destroyed as he threw that ball. During the return, personal foul. Return team, illegal blind side block. 15-yard penalty. Force down. Now that will affect the field position. It will not affect the turnover as Connor and the Hokies come up with the football. Virginia Tech brings pressure off the short side here. You'll see you see Floyd come in there for the hit. What surprised me about that play is on third and short that Virginia Tech would have a, a slow developing pass route. I would have thought they'd try to get it out a little bit quicker. Three step hitch something quick over the middle and they paid for it desperately. And Virginia can only hope that Bryce Perkins is OK. He took quite a hit there. Looks like uh, he he's is a tough man. He's a tough, tough, tough man. Uh, the penalty is huge, though, because Virginia Tech was thinking they'd have the ball inside the UVA 20. They're back in their own territory. 
They hand it off first carry of the afternoon for their tailback the junior from Chesapeake Virginia Deshaun McLeese who's done a nice job not a big runner but an effective runner. I think it's important for Gen for Virginia Tech to establish a run game so that they can force Virginia to play some man to man on the outside. Their corners are good corners not great corners and I think they can take advantage of that matchup if they can establish the run game early. Virginia had one of the best cornerbacks in all of college football Bryce Hall but he has been out and won't come back and play this year. Hooker throwing down the field and the pass is caught. There's one of those wide outs. I think with an advantage Damon Hazleton the transfer from Ball State who's turned into a really good player for Tech. It's a corner route. It's a nice job. They get a matchup on a safety. Hazleton makes a nice break. Good protection. Really nice throw too by Hooker. Now Blunt's a good player, but he's a tough, tough matchup against the wide receiver. 23 yard game, first of 10 Hokies inside the Virginia 30. Hooker looking right, and that one to Hazleton again. Nice catch, he turns it upfield. Got shoved out of bounds about a yard short of the first down. Damon Hazleton missed the first month of the year essentially. Even with that, he's got seven touchdowns. They have a couple big play threats on the outside. So the numbers are modest, but keep that in mind where he missed a lot of time. Sure. And, and they spread it around well. And they use a lot of receivers. And right now, Hooker is throwing with tremendous accuracy. Second and one. A handoff and a straight ahead run for the first down. How many teams hand the ball off to a tight end in the backfield? Virginia Tech uses their tight ends. That was Dalton Keene. They have another one, James Mitchell, number 82. Dalton's wearing the Frank Beamer honorary number 25, along with Ray Shard Ashby for this game. First time Virginia Tech's ever given that 25 to two players in the same game, and Keene got a just a standard handoff yep. as a tailback. They're, they're tight ends. Now, their tight ends have 14 catches and four touchdown rushing plays. You, you don't see that very often in football. It is so unusual, but it's really effective. Keene came in motion on first down. They play fake to McLeese. Hooker across the middle, incomplete, but here comes the penalty flag. Oh. Intended for Hazleton. That was Nick Grant in coverage. Uh, there was some contact. Holding defense number one. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. So they called holding there. Not pass interference. Watch this on the outside. They're playing without a middle safety. A little bit of a grab there. You see the the right hand on the on the shoulder or on the uh, back pad. That's tight. I don't know that you call that, but hey. It's a good point by you. It's almost like if his hand didn't get caught on yeah. the side of that, yeah. that pad, made it look maybe a little worse than it was. I don't feel like he deterred the receiver's ability to go catch the football there. But he's got to play inside leverage, take away the slant when they're playing without a middle safety. So first and goal, Hooker, handoff. And McLeese had nowhere to go. In fact, he may have lost a half a yard. Virginia Tech has been outstanding offensively in the red zone. You look at them nationally, they're ranked fourth. They're scoring 95% of the time they're in the red zone. They're scoring touchdowns over 70% of the time. Those are great numbers. And, and Virginia Tech on defense, not bad as well. So this is a key area of the field for both teams statistically. Changing the play here. Again, you got a tight end in the backfield alongside Hooker. That's Dalton Keene. Hooker's going to run it straight ahead. Kind of squirted through. Wasn't a big hole. It gets close to the five to set up third and goal. You know, I, I never liked third and five as a defensive coordinator on the five-yard line. I felt a little bit hamstrung. You know, what do I do, especially against a running quarterback? You know, do I, do I man him up? Do I double guys? Do I play for the quarterback run? How do I do it all? It's really t a tough spot for you defensively. students here it's going to be loud inside this stadium today even though it's the Thanksgiving holiday so we'll see I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback draw here
Hooker gives it on a jet sweep type play, trying to get to the corner, and a big hit stopped short of the goal line. Trey Turner just could not get there. And Nick Grant was in on the play. He got penalized for the hold, but he made a big stop there. It's fourth and goal. Big tackle. Big tackle right there. You know, Virginia Tech uses their receivers a lot in the run game with the jet sweep. I'm not sure how much I like it there. I would have liked to have seen something more up the middle with the quarterback, but uh, field goal up and good. So the Hokies turn. Well, tomorrow, Saturday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN on the ESPN app. High's been hopeful. Joe Burrow, number two, LSU, trying to stay undefeated against Texas A&M at home in an SEC matchup. Our college football playoff rankings brought to you by PlayStation, and it was a switch at the top. LSU moves from one to two. Ohio State, of course, tomorrow gets Michigan, then the Big Ten championship game. I, I mean, I do think that is a significant move for Ohio State. Oh, yeah. It, it, the seedings huge. I, you figure Clemson's in that 2-3 range. You avoid Clemson in a semi if you're number one. Kevin Nagandi in studio. Let's say hi to Kevin for the first time this afternoon. Dave, Jim, let's go to Texas. Take a look at the AT&T best performance. Texas Tech staying at home this postseason. Their bowl game today in Austin against Texas. Jet W to Keyshawn Carter, 13 yards. It's 13-0. Red Raiders, back to you guys. Boy, wow, Texas is struggling of late, really struggling. Yeah, you, you think back, we're talking about LSU, you think back to their game against LSU, how close they played the Tigers, how hard fought that game was. Feels like a long time ago. So we'll keep you posted on that one. We got a good one here. Perkins with the completion. He had two receivers out there for a gain of eight. Good news for Virginia. The accelerant is back on the field. That's Bryce Perkins. And after that nasty shot, he came off the field. He wanted nothing to do with the trainers. He was more concerned going over the plays and the miscommunication in terms of his wide receivers with his quarterback coach, Jason Beck. Remember, this kid is tough as nails. You can hit him all day. He's recovered from a broken neck in his career. The accelerant. I love that. Great description. And it, is, it is a part of his personal story. That neck injury, some thought, would end his football career. He took another hit there through low, and that was ruled a catch. No, from the uh, official all the way behind the play comes in late and says incomplete and hit the turf intended for Terrell Jana. It's third down. So another hit on Perkins. That one kind of wobbled out there and clearly incomplete. A, a problem for Virginia has been protecting the quarterback. Now, Bryce gets him out of a lot of situations with his ability to avoid a rush or a move, but when you're coming from his blind side like that, he can't see you. You've got to find a way to put a body on those extra rushers. So far, Bud is bringing people from everywhere, and it gets tough to figure out for the offensive line and backs. Tight end tally in motion. Perkins will keep it, and why not? Another first down and a huge hole up the middle. There goes Bryce Perkins. Inside the 20, all the way. Touchdown. Wow. 67 yards. This is a dynamic, accelerant player. I'll tell you something now. You better be careful when you pressure a Bryce Perkins the way that Virginia Tech just pressured him because if he beats the pressure, there's nobody in the backfield that can catch him. What a play. Hokies have been burned twice now on those big rushes. And that one the biggest of all. This extra point up and perfect, so they kick it through this time. And the Cavaliers trying to snap a 15-game losing streak in this rivalry are leaning on number three. Bryce Perkins from 67 years. 15 years of misery in this rivalry for the Cavaliers. But Bryce Perkins has come to play this afternoon. 13-3 Virginia over their rivals, the Hokies of Virginia Tech. After another long Bryce Perkins touchdown run, Cavaliers will kick it off deep. And that will be another touchback. Take a closer look at that last touchdown run with today's track phone playbook, Jim. Well, this is a tremendous play by Virginia. You see Virginia Tech is going to bring three 
to the boundary, or to, I'm sorry, to the field. Virginia Tech now, they seal it here, they get a seal here, and then they've got a lead blocker for Bryce to run the ball. Lead blocker doesn't have anyone to block, but sometimes when you attack the pressure, you see how we get the seal right there, things are opened up. Now we've got a lead blocker to the pop who doesn't have any, anyone to block, gets a block down the field, but just you're attacking the pressure side, and if you split it, it's a big play offense, as you saw there. Virginia Tech with the ball back, and they know they're going to have to put points on the board today. They haven't had to do much of that of late. Good open field tackle of Trey Turner. They're flying around on defense. Virginia, you know, everyone talks about this Virginia Tech defense, and rightfully so. It's outstanding. But Virginia can play some defense in their own right. I mean, this is a team now that's 22nd in the country in total defense, and they fly around, and they do a great job using their linebackers in different spots. Yeah, those linebackers, Zane Zandier, Noah Taylor, Charles Snowden, Jordan Mack, all big playmakers for the Cavs. Deep ball with a man open. It is incomplete just beyond the reach of Hazleton. He had a step. He had a step. And good ball. Starts with good protection up front. Giving Hooker some time to throw the ball. And he catches a little double move there. And he catches Grant looking in the backfield. He gets that step. Oh, just out of reach. Boy, that would have been a huge play now to respond. And we got a third and long. I'll be interested to see here how Virginia uses their linebackers. Let's watch Jordan Mack number four and see if they bring him. He's sitting in that spot there. He found her. Pressure got picked up, and so he had time to find his tight end for a Virginia Tech first down. Dalton Keene with the catch outside the 40. Yeah, and the key here is, is protection because Virginia brings both in, inside linebackers. You see that with a little cross stunt. Great pick up by the back. Nice job by the left guard. And they give Hooker just enough time to deliver to the outside. Nice, nicely done by the offensive line and the running back. Both these teams talk a lot about how their offensive lines have improved as the season's gone on. Both teams are young. Especially Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech starting two, two freshmen on the offensive line. Pretty amazing. Nowhere to run that time. Brian Lamb back, another tackle for him. There are some of those young guys up front, including their center, Brian Hudson, a true freshman. A true freshman center who has to have the responsibilities to make the calls. Luke Tenuta, who's a redshirt freshman. They got all underclassmen up front. Luke Tenuta's uh, dad is a heck of a football coach, and Luke knows how to play the game. Now, for Virginia Tech, I like the fact they're trying to run the ball inside, but I think they better serve running inside with their quarterback. Final minute of an action-filled first quarter. Hooker with the quarterback straight up the middle. He slipped on the turf as he got across midfield. He does get a Virginia Tech first down. Well, you, you may well be right. Uh, they have been effective running the ball overall, but Hooker's ability on the ground is what really has changed this Tech offense. Well, the way that Virginia's playing inside right now, they're physical, and they're fired up. And they're playing with great energy. And I think that if they can get some quarterback leads, some quarterback draws, a design quarterback run like they just had there, that's going to be the most effective way for them to run the ball consistently. We'll see if they get the ball snapped. They do on the final play of the quarter. A jet sweep. Another slippage. So maybe that part of the field is a little more slippery than somewhere else. Uh, we come to the end of the first quarter. Action filled even from before kickoff. Be it there will be an ACC team in that game. Even if Clemson is in the playoff. Hooker looking to throw back the opposite direction on second down. Instead takes off. And got drilled. So the first play of the second quarter does not get much for the Hokies. It's third down coming up. The CEO of the Orange Bowl is here today in Charlottesville. It is not a lot, but nope. it is a very strong possibility that the winner of this game, no matter what happens next weekend against Clemson, will represent the ACC and get to play in the Orange Bowl. From what we've seen today, they'll represent the ACC very, very well if they do play in the Orange Bowl. Third and nine for the Hokies. Hooker with pressure coming. It got picked up. Finally delivers, and that one is caught. And the ball comes out. Trey Turner was fighting for yardage, and the ball got poked out. UVA has it.
to the play. Sideline warning against the Virginia bench. This is their first. Uh, that was number four. You've talked about him already. Jordan Mack from his linebacker oh. spot to put that hit on right on the football. That was going to be a Virginia Tech first down. Instead, it's a turnover. That's an effort play. That's a linebacker turning and running to the football and putting his hat on the ball. What a great play because that was a big third down conversion into Virginia territory. You gotta love the way Jordan Mack plays this game. Well, Tech has been so good in that regard lately taking care of the ball. A costly turnover gives it back to Bryce Perkins and the Virginia offense. Perkins downfield. Man, oh, and it's complete. Inside the 40 and inside the 30 before Hasis Dubois finally run out of bounds. Now here come the penalty flags. And we got a fight right along the brick sidewall with the Cavaliers bench coming to the aid of their teammate. Virginia Tech a little frustrated on defense, obviously. Having trouble stopping Bryce, then Bryce fakes it, hits him deep. You gotta you've gotta let a guy go at the boundary. You can't carry your tackle all the way into the darn brick wall. And that's what Ray Shard Ashby, who's the leader of this Virginia Tech defense, is trying to tell the safety divine Diablo. Uh, and it's surprising to me because when you watch Virginia Tech on defense, they're a mature, experienced group. There are two fouls in the play, and they will offset after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against number eight. Unsportsmanlike conduct against number 17. Those penalties are offset. This is their first unsportsmanlike of the game. Well, Jeff got the directions mixed up. It was 17 on defense, 8 on offense, but the point is there'll be no extra yardage after the play. Those penalties offset. I mean, that's an obvious. Look at the block takes him all the way into the bricks. And you're coming to the defense of your of your player. I guess you've got to be able to restrain yourself. It's, it's hard in a big game like this, but you've got to be able to do that. So a 32-yard gain. And Virginia, after coming up with the turnover, right away into Hokies territory. Perkins across the middle, another good pass. Down to the 21-yard line. A gain of six on first down. Bryce Perkins, between the numbers and short, as I said, extremely accurate. Throws with great timing. And it opens up a lot of things, as we, we know, which is him running the football. Second and four, he does run it. This time, nowhere to go. It'll be third down. Well, you mentioned it, how Bryce Perkins, everybody knew he was big, strong, great athlete. There just were not many programs who looked at him as a quarterback. It's, a, it's an old story. We've heard it many times with many yep. great players in the history of college football. But Bryce Perkins got a well, chance to play quarterback here. He did. And it's unfortunate. You know, I was fortunate to coach his brother, Paul, who plays in the NFL now. I had him for four years. So I've been watching Bryce since he was 14 or 15 years old. And always a, a tremendous young man. But I, I doubted his ability to play quarterback. It's so great that he didn't doubt his ability to play quarterback. Before he does it, it I love it. Going over the top, and it is incomplete. There was some hand fighting. Here comes the flag. Armani Chapman, the redshirt freshman from Virginia Beach, knows all about this in-state rivalry. The defender outside for the Hokies. And I would imagine that one, well, you know, he's looking to the Virginia Tech sideline. OPI maybe, that, huh? That may be an offensive pass interference call. Huh. And this would be a decision for Justin Fuente. Do you take fourth and six? Pass interference. Offense number eight. Penalty being enforced. Third down. And I, you know, that that's a tough one, but I don't blame Justin Fuente for taking the penalty yardage. It's a big penalty. No, two things. You knock him out of field goal range for sure. You make it third and forever, although third and 16 didn't serve him too well in the first quarter. Well, Chapman may have been hanging on, but Dubois well, definitely it, did yeah. push off there. It's that shove at the very end. I mean, they were hand fighting. It was equal until the shove right at the very end. And we should point out Caleb Farley, outstanding defensive back. He has not been on the field. We're told, we asked, we're told back spasms for Caleb Farley. So I don't know if he's going to come back in the game or not, but that's a big loss for the Hokies defense. Third and 21 after the penalty. This is where Perkins has used his legs in this game. He's going to try to do it again. This time, though, the Hokies are not going to let him get loose. 
So Perkins just got back to the line of scrimmage, fourth and long. And now we'll see what Bronco Mendenhall wants to do. Maybe just play the field position game. I think you punt it here for sure. Uh, Virginia Tech's defensive line made an adjustment there on third and long. Rather than trying to get up the field, they played lateral at a spy because once again, now that was a designed quarterback run if there's nothing available down the field. So on those third and long situations, rather than penetrate and, and create gaps, playing a little bit more lateral and making Bryce try to bounce. Senior punter Nash Griffin. Trying to pin the Hokies deep would get close, but don't get a piece of the football. And that one is going to be a touchback. So close to perfect, but not quite. Paul Carcaterra, Jordan Mack, a terrific football player. So is Noah Taylor, who got the pressure from the outside for Virginia. And a, just a great all around kid, Jordan Mack. Another one of the seniors who went through the senior day ceremony before this game with everything on the line on top of what's at stake the coastal championship a chance to play for the ACC title maybe a berth in the Orange Bowl trying to snap the long winning streak for Virginia Tech senior day for so many of these Virginia players. Tight end Dalton Keene comes in motion. Hendon Hooker a little pump bait and he's going to throw across the middle incomplete. He may have gotten bumped as he released that ball. Football sort of wobbled out there. It's third down. A decent protection. You, you talk about Mac. We saw him with the cause fumble, but he's an inside linebacker with seven and a half sacks, and he rushed on that, that last play there. So his versatility is really off the charts, as is all these linebackers for Virginia, but this is a special young man. Special, special young man. You're up for that Campbell trophy. That says a lot about your character. Heck of a football player, heck of a kid off the field. Great, great Bill Campbell is a, a coach, a businessman, and just a tremendous and inspirational person. Third and ten. Pressure picked up. Hooker throws short. A penalty flag behind the play. That turn up field, though, by James Mitchell. Close. He is actually spotted a little bit short of the first down. And we'll see what the penalty is. This holding there. This is uh... holding offense number 61. 10 yard penalty. Third down. Now that, that, that is interesting that they're <laughs> accepting that penalty. It was going to be uh, fourth and one. I think that they, they thought that if they if they declined it and left the fourth and one that Justin Fuentes might just say hey you know what we're, we're going to take a shot here early in the game and go for it on fourth down. That would have been highly risky but you never know. Chance to back him up play some zone defense come after him with three it looks like they're going to rush three right here and drop in the zone. And that will be third and 20 maybe that Cavaliers defense can come up with an even bigger play. Hooker, that pass is there, but the open field tackle well short of the first down. Trey Turner with the catch. Nick Grant was on him. So essentially the same result, this time with no chance for Tech to even consider going for it this part of the field. They'll pump the ball away. All right, they, they created some field position for themselves. Virginia Tech did. But Virginia, nice job of getting off the field. What I consider three and out. One of the best punters in college football, Oscar Bradburn, has had a heck of a year, like so many in the college game these days, a native of Australia. Left-footed kicker. Booms one very high. Billy Kemp, no fair catch, will go out of bounds. Short of the 40 on this gorgeous Thanksgiving Friday on one of the most beautiful campuses in the country, the Cavaliers. But in Blacksburg on the campus of Virginia Tech. Not a bad place to be. All right. From turkeys to our Aflac duck. Time for our Aflac trivia question. UVA has lost 15 straight against Virginia Tech. Who is the last Virginia quarterback to defeat the Hokies? Our Aflac trivia question is. The Cavaliers get the ball back. Bryce Perkins trying to end that streak today with his Cavs close to their own 40 on first down. And Perkins will be sacked. So the Hokies start to have a little more effect effective rush game. They get Perkins to the ground. And we'll check in in studio with Kevin DeGandhi. Dave, Jim, let's take a look at a performance above brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Back to Austin, Sam Ellinger, the touchdown run here. They got the extra point block, so now, it's now 14 to 6. And then Ellinger again to Devin DuVernay. Big play. That would set up a Daniel Young touchdown run. They got the two-point conversion. We're tied up at 14 apiece in Austin. Back to you guys. 
All right, so the Longhorns have settled down. Feels like the Hokies have done something similar here. Perkins throwing the ball on second down, short hops it. And he took another hit there. All right, we asked it. Let's answer our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Last Virginia quarterback to beat the Hokies all the way back in 2003, Matt Shaw, who's still going in the NFL. Still going strong. He's a backup in Atlanta. Guess what? Guess who drafted Matt Shaw out who, of Virginia? Who drafted That would have been uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the Atlanta Falcons, not me. Yeah, who are you? Great, you were in cool. charge back then. Great, great, great man, Matt Shaw. Well, he was a heck of a quarterback here. It's been a long time. 15 straight losses for he's gonna run. He is gonna run. He's gonna go up the middle and he's gonna get stopped short. So not this time. Perkins took off on third down. He's had two huge third down runs for touchdowns already in this game, but the Hokies are starting to adjust to that. It's fourth and seven. They've changed what they're doing a little bit up front. As I said at the last series, is they're playing a little bit less uh, vertical, a little bit more lateral. They're filling up the lanes where he can escape. They've got eyes on him, and so far the last two series has been effective but he's he's a tough one to contain the entire game I guarantee you every time he takes off Bud Foster's holding his breath I know I am Griffin the punter Davion Robinson this one may be returnable he's got incredible quickness and there goes Robinson Robinson outside the 45 almost back to midfield so the first real big special teams play of the day goes the way of the Hokies. Well, Cavaliers off to a good start playing well in the first half. They lead 13 to 3. Our college football presented by Track Phone as a part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. The Commonwealth Cup on the line. A spot in the ACC Championship game on the line. The winning streak slash losing streak depending on what side you're on. As the Hokies hand the ball off to their tight end from the uh, backfield, Dalton Keene with the first down carry. Patrick Kearney, a UVA great from the late 90s, is a friend of mine. He was an all-pro in the NFL as well. He told me before the game he was a PA guy from Pennsylvania. He didn't get it. After the first practice leading up to his first Commonwealth Cup, he got it. And it's the one game every single year they have to win. And he told me we haven't won in a long time. That was a good little cart name drop there. Patrick Kearney, who is one of the all-time great Cavaliers. Hooker is going to go down. He was trying to get rid of the ball, and he just could not. Big Charles Snowden, who is such a physical specimen from his linebacker spot with the huge sack. Snowden is such a versatile player. This guy's six foot seven. He plays some offense. Watch him coming off the right there, though. Beats the block inside. They brought a they brought a corner blitz. Tackle had to decide who to block. Chose the wrong guy. You got to stay with the guy on the inside. Make the guy coming a long way. In that case, Heskin Smith trying to be the guy that makes the tackle. I love watching Snowden. I love watching Taylor. I love watching Jordan Mack. I love watching Zane Zandier and the way that they play these linebackers. For Virginia. Loss of 11. It's third and 18 for the Hokies. Cavaliers defense is really playing well. They hand the ball off, so that's almost like a concession for Virginia Tech. McLeese gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's fourth down and long, and the Hokies are going to punt the ball once again. And I think Justin Fuente is okay with that. After that big loss, just sort of cut your losses and try play for some field position. Billy Kemp, the punt returner for Virginia. Sometimes they'll use two guys, not this time. Bradburn with a line drive style punt inside the 10. Kemp is going to get close to the 10-yard line, but maybe not all the way there. separate those uh, Hokies and Cavaliers. It's a rivalry game. We expect more of that as the game goes on. Time to take a look at our hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Now, so far, pretty easy choice with Bryce Perkins and his two long touchdown runs. Bryce Perkins is having a special, special type of game. Both his touchdown runs coming on third down and money downs. What a player. Play with great determination. A lot on the line for him personally, and obviously a lot on the line, on the line for this Virginia football team. What a great leader. What a tough young man. Quality. 
That 67 yard run the longest of his Virginia career. He's already got a career high with his 138 rush yards. On his senior day handoff first down to the Papa straight ahead outside the 10 to about the 12. I mean Bronco Mendenhall has been very upfront about look you go back a couple of years we were not talented enough and we have leaned on Bryce Perkins to carry this program forward as they try to catch the rest of the roster up. We're going to take a break while there's a tech player down on the field 13 3 Virginia. No surprises? Well, it's free checking, and they pay back for ATM fees, which is pretty special. That's surprising. Yeah, but it's not a surprise. Good. I hate surprises! Hey, sis. Oh, my God! <laughs> you know I hate surprises. Free checking account options that pay you back. Just one of the perks of membership. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. All right, right back to football. Dave Fleming, Jim Moore, Paul Carcaterra from Charlottesville, Virginia. The 101st meeting between Virginia Tech and UVA. Perkins throws. That pass is caught. Kemp knocked out of bounds, short of the first down. So third and two coming up for Virginia. Kemp has brought a little spark to this offense. He's, he's a one guy that's got some quickness and some open field ability. They've got some good sized receivers who catch it well, but not a lot of yards after catch. But Kemp's got some of that. I've, I've enjoyed watching him the last few games. He'll come off the field for this third and two play. Bryce Perkins play fake in the pocket quick release and the open field tackle the Hokies think that they stopped the tight end Cowley short and I think they did by about a half a yard what a nice tackle out in the open field and Tanner Cowley who's tough to bring down will stop short we use Cowley a lot of different ways he was lined up in the backfield there quick play fake get it to him to the flat Boy, that is a really, really nice tackle there by Chapman. Right, Coming up, cutting his legs down. That's Chapman, who plays some, but not a ton yeah. with Caleb Farley. Not yeah. in this game, at least hasn't been much today. Farley is a heck of a player, so he's got some big shoes to feel, Phil, and that was a nice play. Griffin sort of stepped to the side. That punt is going to land very short on a couple bounces. Robinson will take it and stays on his feet. Tavion Robinson. Into Virginia territory and all the way inside the 30. Back to back big punt returns for the true freshman, the high school quarterback who has become a big playmaker for the Hokies. Tavion Robinson, this time 36 yards. Took it on a bounce. Took it on a bounce. He's telling, he's yelling, Peter, 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 getting everyone away from it. But when it bounces right up into your hands, why not save some yardage? He didn't only save yardage, but he gained big yardage there. That's a heady play for a true freshman right there and a confident play. You watch him these last few weeks especially you get the sense that he has a chance to be one of the greats. I agree in this program. He's got some special natural abilities. Well, the Hokies will run the ball with Hendon Hooker their sophomore quarterback. He got dragged down. Noah Taylor has been everywhere in this first half with the tackle. Well, coming up this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, a couple days from now, uh, the legend of Heisman Trophy winner and MVP favorite Lamar Jackson was born. His is a great story. You got Randy Moss. You got the top turkey bowl play from across the country. That is uh, NFL Countdown, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Talks on ESPN. Virginia. There was a timeout, by the way, Fair called course. by the Cavaliers. Timeout. So we're going to take a timeout ourselves and be back shortly here to Charlottesville. 13-3 here in Charlottesville for this rivalry game. Hokies Cavaliers final minutes of the second quarter 13-3 Virginia but the Hokies after a big punt return good field position second and long Hooker throws it out. He's got Turner in the left flat with the catch the turn up field first down Virginia Tech Trey Turner inside the 20 and inside the 15 yard line. Nice play here. Of course Turner does a great job but watch the block on the outside there by Hazleton just gets the DB turned inside gives his runner the sideline tremendous job excellent play by Hazleton and Turner and Hooker deliver the ball on time so first and ten Hokies they'll rush to the line of scrimmage quickly 
Hooker takes a snap. A little stutter step. It was looking to run. Virginia saw that coming. Plus, a penalty flag is thrown right into the middle of that scrum. In this part of the field, Nick Jackson, true freshman linebacker on the field for that play, was in on the tackle. Even with no gain, I would think the Cavaliers might accept a holding penalty just to try to push the Hokies back as far as possible. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Wow. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down. So that was not what I was expecting. That well, sometimes part when of the, the field, the flag is thrown from that position into that area. You'll see either hands to the face or face mask. But he gets it. This gets a little. Yep. Doesn't have to be much. Yep. Well, that means first and goal, Virginia Tech. That's huge. Hendon Hooker, undefeated as a starter, 6-0, takes his snap and hands it off. Turner coming left side, stumbles to the pylon, touchdown. There's another flag on the play. Before the snap, ball start, offense, number 14, five-yard penalty, first down. Take it off the board, that's on Hazleton, the wide receiver. Uh, I'll tell you what, red zone penalties will kill you. You don't see that often. A guy like Hazleton, you know, he's a mature player, just jumps a little bit right there. You see it. It has zero impact on the play, but it has so much impact on the result of the play. Man, is that frustrating for Virginia Tech? Well, and they're such a great red zone offense, but they've struggled today so far. That's a break for Virginia. First and goal, but outside the 10. Snowden creeping up now. He'll drop into coverage. Hooker is going to take off. Hooker trying to pick his way forward, got a couple yards. Well, we're under three minutes to go here in the first half. Virginia Tech will get the ball to start the second half. Virginia Tech needs to at least get a three on the board and pull within a touchdown. Obviously, a touchdown would be great, but as you just said, they've taken a couple, couple minutes off the clock, get some points, get a stop and then get the ball to start the second half to capture a little bit more men. You see all those numbers scrolling along. There. The defenses have dominated in the second quarter of this game. Hooker throws a slap. Turner with the catch. Stayed on his feet. Took a huge hit as he got inside the 10. Maybe got an extra couple yards. Tough guy play from Trey Turner, but Joey Blunt, among others, were there to make the stop. Joey Time Blunt, for good Virginia. football player. Their second. Not, not a surprise to see Bronco seconds. Mendenhall take the timeout. 2.15 on the clock. So he's thinking about getting the ball back, saving some of that time. So the Cavaliers will save some time and see if they can give Bryce Perkins another opportunity on this uh, beautiful Thanksgiving Friday, a full day of college football. And what a great way to start it, this rivalry game. With really, Jim, I mean, it's amazing how much, considering the history of this rivalry, this is 101st time these two teams have played. There haven't been many games like this where a, a, a chance to play for a championship is on the line. Maybe a chance for a huge bowl berth in the Orange Bowl. You got the winning streak for the Hokies that the Cavaliers are just desperate to end. And the two teams are playing like there's that much on the line. No, the the energy in the stadium and the way the players are playing indicates all those things that you're talking about. It's really a fun game to be a part of. Huge, huge third and eight here. Huge third and eight. Maybe one of the reasons Bronco called timeout, make sure he gets his guys in the right call with the right mindset. Could be. Hooker has Dalton Keene alongside. Takes a snap. Stands in over the top. It is incomplete. It was picked off by Blunt, but out of bounds. And I don't know that Joey Blunt knows that it was ruled incomplete. Wow. He caught it, and he's saying, what? Pass. Fourth down. Let's look at it here. Heck of a play. Does he get it? Ooh. Wow. I, I guess I, it depends. I think he's got that. And this is a huge call. The ruling of an incomplete pass is under further review. Dave, this is a huge call. Because this, if it's an interception, then it stays a 10-point game. Let's see. Right foot. 
I don't know if he's got possession yet, though. I think that would be the, yeah. the, the follow-up uh, question. Has uh, he secured possession of the ball? He has it uh, now for sure. Yeah, I, you know what? And, and I don't know if there's enough there to overturn it. I think that right foot Boy, is down close. before the left foot is out of bounds. Absolutely. But the question is, does he have possession yeah. of the ball? And that one might be tough to overturn. I think you're right, but uh, big decision here. You look at it from this angle, it looks pretty clear that he's got possession. He's got the front front end with his left hand. I mean, he's that's control. But now you look at his right foot, just a little bit off the ground, and then the left foot on the line. Virginia thinks that this call is going their way. Well, let's see. The officials, you, all you have to do is watch the white hat. And if he gives it one of these where he's tamping down, then it, the call stands and a little flip over it. But they're reacting to the scoreboard. They're not reacting to the officials. Here Correct. we go. Here we go. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Oh, man. I, I think that's the right, the right call. I uh, I think it's really close, but I just didn't see enough there to, to overrule it. What do you think? <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. I think too many times this year that standard has not been upheld of it has to be incontrovertible. It has to be clear and convincing evidence. I've seen too many instances where that has not been the case. This seems to be the case. In this instance, the field goal is up and good. That's a three-point ruling instead of an interception. Yep. The field goal is up and good. The Hokie Port, Kevin Agandi, Mark Sanchez, Jonathan Vilma, get you caught up to date with what's going on across the rest of college football, get you ready for a full day and a full weekend of rivalry games and huge stakes games across the college football landscape. Another touchback. The Hokies have done a good job of that. It's Dax Hollyfield, the chef. I spoke to him this week, and he told me his food should be award-winning. He does it on the grill with seasoned meats and game-day brownies, chicken parm, which is my favorite, I'll add, and seafood baits for teammates. Who wouldn't want that, Dave and Jim? And I'll tell you, his late grandma, Bebe, when I spoke to him, he told me he learned everything from her in the kitchen during the Thanksgiving holidays. He said she taught him how to throw it down in the kitchen. This kid's a riot, man. You got to spend some time with Dax Holiday. He makes you laugh. Big personality, big talent on the field, interests off the field. As Perkins of the Virginia offense back out there, penalty flag throw. The pass is knocked down incomplete. Couple things to go through. We'll wait for the penalty call here. Hokies have all three timeouts, two minutes and a second on the clock. So both teams can sort of play this and see how the first few plays go. The pass was incomplete. The penalty is going to be against Virginia. We'll see what Justin Fuente wants to do. Illegal formation, offense, that yeah, penalty's declined. Second down. It'll be second down, and after that incompletion, I like now, that. Virginia Tech can start to think about getting the ball back. Right. Well, first of all, incompletion. All right, clock stops on the penalty or the incompletion, but now they save the time that would have been wasted had they declined it, and it's first down yep. again. And seconds matter at the end of the half and the end of the game. Perkins throws. That one is complete. Hanging on to the football with the big hit short of the 30. Fuente will use one of those three timeouts to set up third down. We'll see. Uh, Terrell Jenna had to hang in there. He knew a hit was coming. He took a hit. Charge timeout. Virginia Tech. Yeah. This is a physical secondary at Virginia Tech. Watch this hit. Boom. I mean, then they go after the football. I love watching these guys play defense. I really do. They're unconventional, but they're physical, they're disciplined, they're mature. They play really, really hard. Certainly well coached with Bud Foster, one of the legends in the game. And they, they know what they're doing. You know, they don't make mental errors. And, and who doesn't love physical defensive football? Uh, Bud's final game as defensive coordinator. He's only 60 years old. He had a couple health scares in the last calendar year. This is his final regular season game. And uh, Bud, who's been around for 290 games as a coordinator for 393 games as an assistant at Virginia Tech over 33 years wants to spend time with his kids with his grandkids he's happy with his decision his defense though in his final year is playing really well third and five 
That's a big play. Hokies are going to have a chance if they can stop Virginia here to get the ball back with plenty of time. Perkins will get hit again. Going deep down the sideline incomplete. And Bryce Perkins has taken some shots in this first half. And he is feeling it. Well, that was a low hit. And, uh, and those hurt. And Virginia has struggled up front in the offensive line all year. Bryce Perkins has been able to get him out of a lot of tough situations because he is mobile. He can do things with his legs. But when you ask him to stand back there in the pocket, and your right tackle gets beat like that, I mean, that's a tough situation for a quarterback. Yeah, it wasn't a dirty hit, but it was no, a low no, hit, no, and I, you're, you're right, it hurts. That's the fourth straight punt coming up now for Virginia. And an important punt. Robinson signals fair catch at around the 20, so that was a better special teams result for Virginia because they have not won the special teams battle in this game. Tech has had two good punt returns. Virginia hadn't made much happen, and they missed an extra point. This was last year. Perkins and the Cavs trying to snap the long losing streak against their rivals. A tight game. The fumble return in the end zone by Virginia Tech for a touchdown to tie it up. And then the overtime 42-yard field goal. Perkins fumbled it when the Cavaliers had a chance in overtime. 34-31. The rivalry win 15th straight for the Hokies. We'll see how aggressive they are here. Final yeah. minute 40 of the first half. Great defensive series that last season for Virginia Tech. They still got two timeouts. They do. Hooker, though, Ooh. had nowhere to go. And he got drilled by Zandier. I think they were just here. trying to get a few yards there and see if they could open it up. They are backed up a little bit. They do get the ball to start the second half, so you're going to be a little bit more conservative in this drive. Make sure you don't give the ball back to Virginia with field position. And you can see it right here. I mean, they're just going to they're going to let it wind down and maybe they make the play on second down and it changes everything for them. But with those timeouts, they've got a lot of options. Call the timeout on defense to see. Maybe you get a big punt return. Maybe it's a bad punt. You get better field position. And you're a little more aggressive. Hooker throws that one in traffic, but caught. The tackle, though, short of the first down. Now do you call a timeout on third and one? So far, the answer is no. No, they're not going to. I think they're going to go fast, though. Go a little quicker, see if you get it here. Maybe then. Penalty throw. Somebody moved. That's on the, that's on the uh, defense. Everybody's pointing at everybody else. Clock for the moment is stopped with 34 seconds to go until halftime. I think that the defense jumped in the neutral zone and then the offense reacted. Well, that would give Virginia Tech a yep. first down if it's against the Cavaliers. Yeah, that's what it was there over there talking to Justin Fuentes about what he wants to do here. Oh my goodness, I'm wrong. They're backing him up. I guess you could use the timeout. Maybe they were asking him if he wanted to use one of those timeouts if the penalty was against his team. Well, now Virginia might want to use a timeout. Yep, Bronco Mendenhall now is out on the field. You can hear fans get impatient. I mean, it's a five-yard penalty one way or the other. I think but everybody... it's significant in, in relation to the time and the timeouts and the score. Ball start. Offense, number 52. The penalty applies to a 10-second runoff. Please reset the game clock to 24 seconds. Okay. The clock will start on my signal. Now what's interesting here is that Fuentes could have used a timeout to eliminate the 24 second Correct. runoff, but he doesn't want to. I think he just wants to get out of here knowing he has the ball to start the second half. And if that's the case, why snap it at all? Well, to me, I would have just let the thing run out. Well, maybe now. You get a big game, have a chance to take a chance down the field. McLeese with the long run. So now the Hokies with those two timeouts. You've got a chance here to throw a, a quick one and call timeout and uh, take a shot to the end zone. 
a little bit far right now to take a shot to the end zone. You get about 10 yards here, call timeout, yep. go down immediately, you got a shot. So eight seconds on the clock outside the 45 after a 22 yard run. And then Hooker steps up, throws middle, incomplete. Zandier had a chance to pick it off now. Yeah, you got three seconds. Shot, yeah. Or you just run it and, and get out of here. You don't want anything stupid to happen. Been a mostly quiet first half for Hendon Hooker. Remember, Virginia Tech gets the ball to start the second half, down by a touchdown after the dynamic runs of Bryce Perkins. Early in this game, this has settled into a defensive battle. Virginia's got the defense way back. Hooker is going to wind up and try to throw it as far as he can. Wow, he's going to get it there. He got it real close. It is officially going to go as an interception. That was picked off by Virginia. So the Cavaliers could celebrate that. that was Noah Taylor the line. His defense has been great in the red zone. We're looking forward to a great second half. With not just the spot in the ACC championship game, the bragging rights, the end of the losing streak for the Cavaliers on the line. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, Bryce Perkins was just awesome, especially early in this game. Yeah, his first quarter was unbelievable. He's got nine rushes, 138 yards, 151 if you take the sacks out of there. Dynamic. But the problem is, is he's been their entire offense, and they've got to get it going in other ways. Because Virginia Tech has done a tremendous job adjusting defensively with their pass rush. They've kind of hemmed him in. He's got three three and outs in a row. That's that's impressive, especially against a guy like Bryce. So and we'll I, see what happens. You know, I thought it was interesting. Bronco Mendenhall talked with Cart going to the locker room before halftime about if we take away Virginia Tech's quarterback run, they can't move the ball up and down the field. Hooker, play fake on first down. His running back picked up a rusher, and he had time to find Hazleton downfield into Virginia territory across the 50 for a huge first play of the second half, 30 yards. You mentioned it, tremendous protection with the running back coming across and picking up Mack, but a great route on the outside, a little post-corner route, and Hazleton does a nice job running the route and well-thrown ball. So Hazleton's got 70 receiving yards. McLeese with the carry left side for a gain of two, maybe three. If we don't run the ball, things will get rough. That's what Justin Fuente just told me. He feels like Hendon Hooker and those speedy wideouts like Hazleton, who you just saw catch that ball, need to open up this offense, but it starts in the line of scrimmage. Defensively, how do you stop Bryce Perkins? Everyone wants to know that. He felt the first quarter was a disaster in terms of the way the defense played their lanes, but they settled down, and he was happy with that second quarter performance. Police gets the carry right side running, sort of picking his way forward, and he gets close to the first down. And maybe uh, Justin Fuente backing up what he told Kark about we got to start to run the ball in different ways. McLeese, a couple productive runs. No, it, you have to be able to run the ball up inside so that Virginia's defense has to commit an extra guy to stopping the run. And then you get the matchups outside, the one on one matchups, where I think that Virginia Tech has an advantage. So it is it's critical. Third and one. Hooker, high snap, hands it off McLeese, who just finds a way to lunge forward and get the Virginia Tech first down. That's an important conversion for the Hokies, who have a chance on this first possession of the second half to tie the game. They have won 15 consecutive games in this rivalry. The last time Virginia beat Tech, 2003. Virginia Tech is going to still play with a high degree of confidence even though they're down just seven. It's a mature football team. I wouldn't be surprised to see a shot play here. First down, Virginia may be showing some pressure. Snowden will come, and Hooker keeps it, goes right where he was. Hendon Hooker doing a Bryce Perkins impersonation. Inside the five, touchdown! Hendon Hooker matching the Virginia quarterback 34 yards an extra point away from Tech tying this game up great job with the ball great job with the fake really sold it it was hard to tell from up here where the ball was and certainly hard for the Virginia defense but what a start for Justin Fuente and his Hokies offense 
Brian Johnson, their place kicker, up and good. That missed extra point on the Cavaliers' side is looming large now as the Hokies have tied the game up. Hendon Hooker on the at this point. Cavaliers trying to snap the long losing streak in this rivalry series. And the Hokies have come from behind to tie the game. Touchback, so the Cavaliers' offense will have it for the first time in the second half Saturday afternoon. That's tomorrow. First place in the Big Ten West, a berth of the Big Ten Championship game, and a matchup against Ohio State on the line. What a year it's been for Minnesota. Number eight team in the country against number 12, Wisconsin. Great rivalry game. So many of them tomorrow. Clemson, South Carolina. Maybe the Tigers can get uh, scared by the Gamecocks, a and LSU, and of course the Iron Bowl and Ohio State, Michigan, all lined up tomorrow, Saturday. But first things first, this Commonwealth Cup rivalry in the state of Virginia. Bryce Perkins has been the offense for the Cavaliers. They have the ball for the first time in the second half of the game now tied 13 apiece and Perkins throws to nobody. So incomplete second at 10 coming up. The uh, winning streak on the line for the Hokies, the losing streak for the Cavs. The winner of this game, it's simple. Think about all the chaos all year long in the ACC. Everybody's been talking about the chaos in the Coastal. Week to week, the predictions were changing. It comes down to the winner of this game gets to play Clemson next week. Virginia has never played in the ACC championship game. They've never won the Coastal Division since they split the ACC in half. Perkins pressure will spin away and now is going to try to take off Bryce Perkins out of bounds made something out of not much at all but it'll be third down along Virginia Tech has switched their philosophy a little bit now we've got a flag way downfield this could be significant but okay. uh, they're rushing four more and they're doing a better job pressuring Perkins after the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness against number 80. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Third down. And after the play as well, so huh. it's third down and very long. Billy Kemp, the wide receiver, sophomore, when the play was finished. Chapman. What the heck? Wow. Just because you're covered up, young man, get free. Wow. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Boy, those, those are killers. And you're, you're, you know what, you're struggling on offense. Had three three and outs in a row. You get yourself into third and maybe manageable. Now all of a sudden you've got big problems. That's after the play. So it's third and forever. And you can just imagine hmm. the pressure is starting to ratchet up a little bit, and maybe that frustration level on yeah. Virginia, thinking this has to be the year we get this done. Perkins on third and long from the pocket throws incomplete. And that one was low. Intended for Joe Reed who's been very quiet in this game. It's fourth and 21 So the Hokies who went right down the field scored a touchdown to tie the game at the start of this second half now force a, a three and out And the penalty backs Virginia dramatically affects field position We've Seen a little momentum sh shift here for sure You know by some measure Virginia has been the best field position team in the country right. this year in college football. They are not winning the field position battle today. No, they're not. They're from the punter from near the goal line. And he boomed one. They needed it. Robinson all the way back to the 31, and he takes a hit. So that was good special teams play by Virginia. 55-yard punt with basically no return. When your mascot is a turkey, Thanksgiving should be an important holiday for you. It is for the people in Blacksburg and the people in the Commonwealth of Virginia with this rivalry. So much at stake today. Tie game, third quarter. Hokies get the ball back. Hendon Hooker off a brilliant touchdown run last time they had it. Hands it off to McLeese. Yeah, Justin Fuente was not lying out of the locker room at halftime saying we need to establish the traditional run game That is what they're trying to do now They've come out here early and handed the ball off and then that set up hooker on the on the little keeper as well so Second and eight after the gain of two McLeese gets it left side and Virginia sniffed that one out In the backfield in a hurry Mandy Alonso led the way no gain third and eight you know Rarely with 11.45 in the third quarter, are you saying, boy, this is a huge third down? But it is a huge third down for Virginia's defense. They need to get off the field because we felt momentum shifting. And, and we think Virginia's defense has to make a play to get them going back 
on offense even. Yeah, the UVA offense has really faltered of late. Third and seven. Hooker in the pocket. They picked up the pressure. He'll throw. It is caught right at midfield. A diving catch by Damon Hazelton. First down, Hokies. You said it, Dave. They, they picked up the pressure. They found the one-on-one -on -one outside. Hooker showed tremendous poise in the pocket, and then Hazelton comes up. Ooh, wait a minute now with a big catch. You may take a look at that one. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see here. The ball can touch the ground, but the ground can't help you yeah, gain possession. They're going to look at it. The previous play of a completed catch is under further review. Yeah, so they're going to take a look. We will take the chance to take a quick break while they review the first down completion. We'll be back right after this. All the field has been reversed, so the Hazelton catch. This is the look that they use to make their determination of no catch. Great camera work. Now, look at I can see it going either way, but to me, he's got hand and forearm. The ball does not move. The ball doesn't shift in his forearm. Really tough call. And I guess there was a little bounce of the ball yep. there as he cradled it, kind of tumbling over. That was a great effort. It sure was. I frankly am a little surprised that they overturned that, but it's an incomplete, and that means fourth down instead of a big first down conversion. So the Virginia defense holds, forces the punt. And they get the uh, ball back. Well, while we have a moment, Monday Night Football matchup. Two of the NFC's best go head-to-head -head on Monday, 8 Eastern. The Vikings and the Seahawks. Russell Wilson at home is so tough. Monday Night Countdown, 6 Eastern. It'll all be on ESPN. Stream live on the app. And right, this Virginia offense... At the beginning of the game, and it mostly it was Bryce Perkins, but still, 16 plays, 190 yards, two touchdowns. The last 15 plays, five punts, 23 yards. It's not a Virginia Tech's defense, but they've got to get Bryce Perkins running the ball and design runs, and then they like this one, and then they got to get it out of his hand quickly in the pass game. You can't ask him to sit back in the pocket and throw it. What they're doing. Bud Foster has said, we're going to make Bryce Perkins play quarterback. That means we're going to rush four. We're going to play some zone. All right, we're going to keep you in the pocket. We're going to make you make throws down the field. Bryce is at his best when there's people coming at him, and he can make you miss and find the open field. So tremendous adjustment by Bud Foster. Virginia has to come up with an answer themselves on offense. Perkins got a yard on first down, second and nine. About five minutes in to the second half, Perkins on the move. And Virginia Tech has just been all over him. That took every bit of effort from Perkins to get a couple yards. Dax Hollyfield, as uh, our friend Paul Carcaterra described it, the chef in on the tackle. Well, when, when they are playing man defense, when Virginia Tech decides to play man, they have now decided that they're going to assign a linebacker to cover Bryce Perkins. People a lot of times say, let's spy him. To me, you want to cover him. That's your man. You have him. Don't spy him. Don't sit back. Attack him. And that's what you're seeing Virginia Tech do. Third and seven. The look of some pressure. Really, they don't bring a whole lot of pressure. Perkins kind of floated one out there. And the pass was caught by Joe Reed, but he was stopped a yard short of the first down. Bronco Mendenhall is a coach who likes to go for it. He likes to be aggressive. He's going to do it here, I, isn't I, he? No. Nope. He was God. thinking about it. Boy, sure. was he thinking about it. He decides to punt the ball away. Go fourth and a, yeah, man, maybe it's a long yard. Maybe that helped make the decision. Well, I think with 930 left in the third quarter in a tie ball game and in a, an emotional rivalry game like this, your defense just had to stop. This is the right decision. Oh, another punt coming up. For Nash Griffin, that is five consecutive three and outs for the Cavaliers. Now Griffin, without much of a rush, got off a shorter punt that's going to bounce and kick out of bounds. So you don't go for it, and a shortish punt, that is not the result that Virginia was looking for. Hokies offense will come back on the field. Well, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. 
You know, the, the people here in Charlottesville, for some reason, I mean, to me, it's just gorgeous noon on Friday after Thanksgiving. Perfect time for a college football game. They, they were hoping this game was going to be played a little later in the day. And I think their main worry was the students weren't going to show up because it is Thanksgiving break. The students are here in huge oh, yeah. numbers. They're here and they're fired up. They've seen a good football game. They should be proud of their team. Virginia Tech has the ball back. Play fake and an open receiver. That is Hazleton who will spin and get close to midfield. A first down completion for the Hokies. Hendon Hooker's a cool cat. Never rattled when things weren't going well in that first half. He attributes his compete level to the bright lights playing hoops in high school at a national level. He also told me his dad, Allen, was a quarterback in college. He taught him the mental part of the position. And it helped that he was doing three-step drops as a young kid. His dad, Allen, a uh, MEAC Conference Hall of Famer. North Carolina A&T quarterback for a lot of years. Hooker handed it off to McLeese, who's had some more running room here in the second half into Virginia territory on the first down run. Deshaun McLeese, the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. You think about all the great players in the history of Virginia Tech's program who have come from that part of this state, from the yep. Tidewater region, Norfolk, Newport News, Chesapeake, from Michael Vick. Oh, I got to coach a couple. Michael Bruce Vick, Smith, D'Angelo Hall, DeAngelo played Hall, against Ruth great Smith. One. Cam Chancellor was a great one. Oh, Tyrod Taylor. I mean, really, going. there's a the, ton of them. The best players in the history of Virginia Tech's program have come from that part of this state. And police is another good one. Hooker, oh, nice. high stack, little fake, and then off and running. A nice open field tackle for the Cavaliers. Saved a bigger gain. Heskin Smith got him on the ground, but that's a first down tech. Virginia Tech has found the formula. They're doing a nice job of running the ball up inside, and they're starting to make some headway doing that. Less two and three yard runs, more five, six, and seven. They're getting the ball outside versus single coverage where they have the advantage, and then the mix of the quarterback design run. So right now, they've got Virginia a little bit off balance on defense. It's really the opposite early in this game. Those big touchdown runs by Perkins. The game has changed dramatically. Straight up the middle. And another good gain on the ground for the Hokies. This time the true freshman, Keyshawn King. This is a nice zone read inside. And a very nice decision by Hooker to hand it off. And then an excellent block by Dalton Keene. So we can get the cut back there by Keyshawn King. Nice job. It's frustrating when you're a defensive coach and they're having it any way that they want it, like Virginia Tech is now. And what happens is you 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 start to doubt yourself. You start searching for a call, and you're searching for a call instead of sticking to what you really went into the game thinking would work for you. That was enough to get the 10 yards and the first down, Virginia Tech. What I worry about now for Virginia's defense is does somebody try to go outside the boundaries of their assignment and make a play? And does it hurt them? So they've got to just, they've got to settle down. They've been good in the red zone so far, and they've got to come up with a stop. They have been against a good red zone offense, yep. Virginia Tech. Cavaliers, this part of the field, they've played some of their best football of the day. Tie game under seven minutes to go, third quarter. Hooker, another staff that was a little off the line. He had to reach up to take it. He's having his way on the ground now. Even with that little hesitation, he got positive yardage inside the 25. You're talking about a 6'4", almost 230-pound man running the ball and running run with physicality. He's not going to go down easy. You know, he doesn't quite look, uh, no, not many quarterbacks look as powerful as Bryce Perkins. Right. But he's similar sized. Yep. A little bit longer. You know, not quite as shifty, but he does have some power to him. Second down and five. Park said it. He's a, he's a cool cat. He's not flustered. Hands it off. That jet sweep motion. And the trip up saved a bigger gain. Turner was down. And he will get enough yardage for another Virginia Tech first down. They're in the red zone inside the 20 and close to the 15. The jet sweep has been an effective part of their run game all year. Their receivers have 35 carries on jet sweeps. Total inside the red zone. So this part of the field in this game, the Hokies offense, seven plays, nine total yards, two field goals. Yep. So you said it. Virginia's defense has done a good job this part of the field. Back in the red zone. 
Virginia Tech is swinging it out left side of the blocker in front Robinson out into the open inside the five diving for the goal line and stopped just a little bit short. Tavion Robinson who last week against Pitt was so close to a touchdown on a long play gets just as close here this afternoon. Good call. Good, Good spot. Call. Perfect spot. 16 yards. It'll be first and goal. Another Tidewater kid who has a chance to be a great one for Virginia Tech. Yeah, he, he's impressive. Impressive in the turn game. Impressive with the ball in his hands. Runs good routes. Explosive runner. First and goal. Hooker. Handoff. McLeese. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. And the Hokies have come all the way back to take their first lead of this rivalry game. Now they are pushing the Cavaliers around here in the second half. Eight plays, 71 yard drive, and from the one, McLeese punches it in. That's a young offensive line, but young and powerful offensive line just moving people out. This Virginia defense since the first quarter spent a lot of time on the field. That may be taking its toll. The first lead of the game for the Hokies. Ryan Johnson lines up the extra point. It is up and good. And when you saw the reaction from some of those Cavaliers fans thinking this can't be happening again. The Hokies are thinking, yeah, we think this can happen early. And looking like this might be the day where Virginia came up with a win to snap the losing streak. First chance to return a kick for Joe Reed, one of the best in the country. And every time he touches the ball, it's nervous time for the opposite special teams. But in the end, good coverage by the Hokies. 20 to 13, Virginia Tech its first lead. The Cavaliers, they spend all year thinking about this game. And Bronco Mendenhall does not hide from it. He says, look, it's not genuine if I downplay it and say it's just like any other game. It's not like any other game. They've got the clock outside their locker room here at home which literally once this game is over will be fully reset to <laughs> count down to next year's Commonwealth Cup matchup they have not won this game since 2003 Bronco told us that he has not just a few many Virginia people come up to him over the course of everyday life and say I don't care what other games you win I don't care if you win any other games can we please beat Virginia Tech I, I think that, that uh, doesn't always hold true. I don't care if you don't win any other game. <laughs> I, I, I do agree you don't with give you. many chance to beat Virginia Tech, but you're right. The significance of a win here is huge on this program and huge in what Broncos trying to establish. Second Ooh, eight. Perkins has got a man open and it is caught by Reed. Into Virginia Tech territory. Man, did UVA need that. Their first first down since their first play of the second quarter. Oh, what a throw. I got a little nervous there, but Joe Reed stretches out and get it. This guy is a heck of a good football player. Find a way to get the ball to Reed. He can make some plays for you. Now, this opens some things up for Virginia. It's been about 26 minutes of game time since they had a first down. It does open something up. I mean, that's not huge, but that's a nice gain of four yards on first down by Tala Papa. At this point, Virginia will take a five yard first down run all the rest of the game. And they brought a corner blitz. Virginia Tech brought, brought the blitz. Tala Papa was able to cut it back and get five. So now, hey, we've got the sticks to our advantage at second and five. So the 42 yard pass play from Perkins to Reed. This one to Reed again, and he takes a huge hit. Right at the first down mark, held on to the football. Rayshard Ashby had that one lined up, and Joe Reed had to hang in there. My goodness. This is what Bryce does for best. He throws it inside the numbers, between the numbers. I tell you what, Reed showed some, some guts right there catching that. Then he did a nice job of protecting himself because he knew he was going to take a hit. He knew it was coming. So first and 10 inside the 30, down at the 25. Cavaliers trying to answer. Playing from behind for the first time all game. Perkins is reading pressure here. He thinks pressure's coming. He changed the play. And they rush four. Throws a little high. Incomplete. Good coverage there. Second and ten.
coverage. Hurrying it up a little bit now. Is a good time for a Bryce Perkins run. What do you think, Dave? I, I think almost any time is a good time <laughs> for a Bryce Perkins run, but I'm with you. They clear out the backfield. Here comes Ashby. He gets away, then throws it incomplete. He had Reed, but he was under so much pressure. That he did well just to avoid the sack. Well, that might have been the best thing he's done. Well, it's not the best thing he's done all day. That, <laughs> that would not be a good statement, but throwing it out there and putting it high because I'm going to tell you even if he catches it it's a four or five yard loss and now they're at least at third and ten they're on the edge of field goal position so they can get some points open some things, some things up on third down time. these are those spots over these 33 years where Bud Foster always likes to dial up some sort oh, of pressure he'll bring it now Let's see if he does it here against the dynamic oh. quarterback Perkins maybe that's the factor he left him on open Zone for the touchdown. 25 yards out, an extra point away from tying this game up. Georgia Tech decided they'd rush four and play zone. Billy Kemp did a nice job of finding the hole in the zone. And then Bryce Perkins playing quarterback, like Bud's trying to make him do, played quarterback and made a heck of a throw. Good move by Kemp to get into the end zone. Oh, it's a good game. And even that one, you mentioned the good delivery, but the power of his rushing ability. You yeah. deter the pressure, you get a normal look, you give him time, and he delivered on third and ten. Right to Kemp, who made that quick move upfield. And the Cavaliers trying to break the long losing streak have come from behind to tie the game at 20 apiece. I got no excuses. Why have I been at this belt ceremony for the last four hours? Because I'm a good aunt. Focus! Ah! Let's face it, this isn't slang TV. With so many on-demand movies, shows, and even stuff for the kiddos, there's a lot more exciting stuff to watch at home. Come on, bud, let's ditch this kung fu. <laughs> yes! Ow, 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 ow. Nothing beats the joy of slinging in. You could save hundreds a year versus cable with America's number one live TV streaming service. Learn more at sling.com. Well, Virginia needed that in the worst way. The Hokies had really wrestled control of this game, but the touchdown drive, two big plays in the pass game from Bryce Perkins, and Virginia has tied it up in front of a great crowd. Bryce Perkins is a cool customer. He doesn't say a lot, but a great leader. The team is dependent on him now more than ever. Booming kickoff through the end zone for a touchback. As the Hokies get the ball back, here's the play that tied the game. You go back to this, this touchdown play, and it looks like Virginia Tech's playing some zone inside, and Kemp just does a really nice job of finding the soft spot, and then the move back to the inside to get in the end zone. Great throw by Bryce Perkins. You saw he had a nice throwing lane that his offensive line created. That's what it's supposed to look like. And Perkins on that, on that drive, two really big completions. The one to Reed on the corner route, and then the touchdown there to Kemp, who I think is a pretty dy dynamic player. I'd like to see him try to get the ball to him a little bit more. Kemp already had the 15-yard penalty. He had that little yeah. leap into the end zone. He made up for it. <laughs> well, it's better than lifting your leg in the end zone. Yeah. I know that. He didn't get penalized for that one. Hooker will throw as the Hokies get the ball back, and there is Tavion Robinson. The Virginia Tech fans, I think, are thinking, let's get 83 the ball as much as possible, the way he's played these last few weeks. Great block on the edge by Trey Turner on Snowden. <laughs> Virginia is playing with fire a little bit now with this little bubble or quick. They're, they're, they're outmanned out there. Virginia Tech is finding it, and we saw it there right before the touchdown. They're making some hay with that play. So we've got to add numbers to the outside of Virginia Tech's, of Virginia's defense. Second down and three, handoff McLeese, or that's not McLeese, that's the true freshman King who got shoved out of bounds short. Be third down and a long two or a short three. Oh, you talk about a big third and two in the third quarter, this is it. Unbalanced. We've got everybody lined up to the field of Virginia Tech's offense. Hooker 
Straight ahead. First down, Hokies. He did not hesitate. No. That was a designed quarterback lead. And big man like that, he's hard to bring down on third and two when he gets a full uh, head of steam like he did there. Yeah, in some ways, that play epitomizes how Virginia Tech's offense has changed since yep. he took over. He's yep. undefeated as a starter, and that really is the main reason why. Mm -hmm. Final minute of quarter number three. Play fake. Hooker heaves it downfield. He's got a man, and it is caught by Turner. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 61 yards. After defense dominated for so long in this game, the offenses are getting it going with big plays. Virginia decided to bring pressure there. It got blocked up. They got the single coverage on the outside. The safety got caught out a little bit, a little bit out of position. And that's a touchdown. That's a couple of really nice plays in a row by Hooker. The third and two conversion and then the downfield throw. Extra point is up and good. The answer for the Hokies. The touchdown pass from Hendon Hooker to Trey Turner, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Catch and run. Seventh season general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. This game has changed so dramatically. Nobody could get a first down for a while now. Touchdowns are flying fast and furious. Third touchdown of the third quarter for the Hokies to put Virginia Tech back in front, 27 to 20. Well, Virginia's playing a quarter's coverage, and you'd like to pick up this backside safety, Devontae Cross, but he gets caught up inside. You're going to rush the inside linebacker to bring five, and then what you see here is this little outcut here, pulls the safety, corner gets beat to the inside, but that guy right there, that safety, you'd like to be able to pick him up on the backside, but I'll tell you what, that is one heck of a route and a great throw by Hinn and Hooker. You know, we talk about him as a runner a lot. That right there demonstrates his ability to get the ball downfield as a passer. The change that changed this Virginia Tech season. He took over, led the Hokies on the road to a dramatic win against Miami, and Virginia Tech has not looked back. Maybe a busted play. Perkins, they'll found an opening, and he completes one down the field to midfield. Another broken tackle. Well, we've got a couple quarterbacks that are telling us, hey, you know what? We're not just runners. We can fire the ball. Oh, that's a nice move right there. Darrell Jana was the wide receiver yeah. who came wow. open. Just the poise that Bryce Perkins showed on a busted play to keep his eyes downfield and make that throw is really impressive. So one play and right back into Virginia Tech territory inside the 40. Perkins over the top. Another chance downfield. He dropped it right in there and it's complete. Assis Dubois inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal. 29 yards. Did he get the foot down? I don't know. I don't know. If I were Virginia, I'd go fast. I'd get up there. And run the play. That's it in the third quarter. Oh, they can't. Third quarter comes to an end, so I would imagine that while we go to break, they are going to take a look at this one. We'll see. Whatever they decide, something has happened to this rivalry game. From quiet and defensive oriented to the quarterbacks taking over big plays all over the field. One quarter to go with a lot on the line in Charlottesville. Virginia Tech with the 27 20 lead after this message and a word from our ABC station. It is so close. And I think we're going to get a call that stands. After further review, the ruling on the field of a completed catch stands. All right, so that was what wow. happened. You know, I, you saw it right, though. I think <laughs> I think the right foot was down when he caught the ball, when he had possession, and I think the left foot dragged a little bit. We've had some really close replay calls on catches today. That was about as close as it gets. It doesn't get much. Especially better. the shot on the right side but of your screen. Watch right here. The right foot, look at right there. It looks like it's dragging. It's woo. It's yeah. close. I think it's the left foot that had contact with the grass while the ball was in his hands. Okay, well, right, left. 
regardless, <laughs> we've got goal to go. 30-yard completion stands. It's first down and goal. Virginia trying to tie the game back up after the Hokies just went back ahead. Perkins, a little run throw and a great catch by the tight end, one-handed style to power his way inside the five. I mean, that's three yards that they yeah. wouldn't have had. Tanner Cowley came up with the ball. That was the same play they ran in third and two in the first half. Came up about a half a yard short. Right there, it gives them a good three. They didn't like that three in the first half, but they'll certainly take it here. He gets second and four on the four. Uh, you've got some options now, especially with a quarterback like, like Bryce Perkins that can run it. And even though we have a full quarter to play, Bronco Mendenhall, I have to think, is thinking well, he wants to punch it in. And Reed in the backfield here. What's that all about? Right. Different formation here. And Perkins, very rare time, he goes under center. Spins to the right. Cuts it back middle. Perkins to the one. Stops short. Third and goal. Reed was a decoy. <laughs> he was for all of us. I, I like the way Bryce Perkins plays football, obviously, uh, but just the toughness he shows, the grit, but more importantly, his poise. He, he never seems rattled. And, and when you're a quarterback that presents yourself that way to your team, everybody else takes hold of that, and they react the same way. Third and goal. From the pistol, foul to pop up behind Perkins. They'll bring Janet in motion, hand it off. Touchdown! Wayne Talapapa, the sophomore from Hawaii, a long way from Charlottesville, but he's in this Commonwealth Cup rivalry as the Cavaliers are a point away from tying it up. They got the, 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 the safety. Floyd isolated, and they ran it right at him. Remember, this was after their first touchdown to take the early lead. Extra point was hooked wide left by the place kicker, Brian Delaney. This one is up, and it is good. So even with the make there, that still looms large. Virginia, instead of leading by a point, that touchdown ties it up. 27-27 here. Texas Tech, how about Texas scoring 21 straight points? Sam Ellinger to Jake Smith. Nice grab by the freshman. Longhorns lead is now 42-24. to You like offense? We got more coming your way. Brady White has thrown multiple touchdown passes each of his last 10 games. Memphis hosting Cincinnati. Coming up later. Back to Charlottesville, Dave, Jim, and Paul. That game with big implications following us. This game with huge implications. The winner will play for the ACC championship against Clemson next week. Virginia and Virginia Tech going back and forth. A returnable kickoff here for Robinson of the Hokies with his speed to the outside. And he gets across the 40-yard line. So here comes Virginia Tech right back at it. Our Pacific Life game summary. The game has changed so much. Three points total in the third quarter. Since then, 35 points on the board. Jim, we've had 28 points, four touchdowns in the last six and a half minutes. And we've seen the best of everything from both teams. We've seen great defense from Virginia Tech. We've seen Bryce Perkins running it. We've seen Hooker throwing it and running it. We've seen Perkins throwing it. We've seen good defense in the red zone from Virginia. And this one's going to come down to the wire. This is, this is great college football right here. And, you know, the other part of this game that we talked about early on, the CEO of the Orange Bowl is here. Yeah. It's not an automatic if you win this game and play for the championship, you're the selection. But both these teams look oh. like they would be great representatives. It, it may not be a slam dunk, but certainly the inside track for an Orange Bowl berth is also on the line here. As they hand the ball off coming right side, that little fly sweep for a nice gain, a first down gain. In fact, Trey Turner, who is having a big afternoon for the Hokies. That jet sweep has been really effective for Virginia Tech all year. Tonight they had you know, they had a touch a touchdown, I think it was called back, but the second half they've had a couple of nice ones. Trey Turner's a dynamic player. He's making plays down the field in the pass game. And that was a nice run. First and ten into Virginia territory. All of a sudden, the defenses are back on their heels on both sides. 
play fake. Hooker misses one in there right to Hazleton. Another Virginia Tech first down. It's a, it, like I said earlier now, Virginia Tech has found a formula. They're running the ball well. Even though the jet sweep is unconventional, it's a good run. And it forces Virginia to play a little bit more single coverage on the outside. And, and there's a little bit of a mismatch there. Virginia Tech and Hazleton and Turner, those guys are good receivers outside. Clock continues to run under 13 minutes to go. Just feels like we are headed for a fantastic finish. McLeese slipped, trying to make the cut. It might not have mattered. He had nowhere to go. Takes a loss of a couple yards. That's what Virginia needs. They need to create some negative plays, get UVA, be, or I'm sorry, Virginia Tech behind the sticks a little bit, and then they can be a little bit more creative with what they're doing in coverage. Be fun to see what they do with Snowden here, what they do with Mac, what they do with Taylor. A lot of good players out at linebacker. Hooker on second and 11. Couple little fakes. Trying to go middle. Instead, he throws over the top incomplete. His yeah. receiver, Turner, came back for the ball, but it was too wide. That was well covered. He didn't have anything there. He wanted to get the ball down the middle. To Hazleton, I believe, and, and couldn't quite do it. So now third and 11. Not oh. slam dunk field goal range either. No. I guess the question here is to do something safe and try to get enough yards to maybe kick a, a field goal, or do you, do you try to get the, the 12 plus and, and keep the drive alive against a really good pass rush? Third and 11. Hooker. Yeah, it looks like a pretty safe call. But safe, maybe they're sorry they called it because he had nowhere to go, no gain. It'll be fourth and long, and this will not be an easy field goal try for the Hokies. So Hooker and offense after the big gains down the field, stuffed inside the 30 for Brian Johnson, who's long this year is 44 yards. A field goal try, attempting to put the Hokies back ahead. Kicking into the student section in the mud. Yeah, this part of the field has been a little slippery. We'll see. Good snap and hold. The kick is on the way, and it is booming right on through. His season long, 47 yards. That was impressive. The Virginia Tech back ahead, 30-27, under 11 to go in this rivalry. Great football coaches in the country, assistant head coach, whatever. Bud Foster today is his final regular season game on the sidelines with Virginia Tech. He's not going away. He'll be around the program a lot, still going to live close to campus. But Bud Foster retiring at the end of this season. His defense has a lead but just a three-point lead the game has changed so dramatically Jim the, the offense has come to life since halftime well Hinn and Hooker started it off in the third quarter with this great run and since then we're seeing great offensive plays on both sides of the ball you see Virginia Tech punching in there you see Kemp here with the nice move to the end zone the throw down the middle versus pressure some good things happening in this game and then we got the power move right into the end zone. Boy, this is fun. Just going back and forth. The offense Look was so that. quiet in the first half, really on both sides. Right there, it's awesome. Virginia Tech has been explosive. 30-27, Virginia gets the ball back, down three. Under 11 minutes to go. Bryce Perkins with some pressure coming. We'll get rid of it over the middle. He's got Dubois open. Still going inside the 20. Still inside the 10 and he won't go down Dubois it's going to be first and goal Cavaliers oh, oh. Bryce Perkins is about to get sacked and just stands in there and delivers it down the field watch the rush here Perkins about to get hit from behind steps into it on the dime and then watch Dubois just get off of me young man just get off of me what a play 67 yards the Cavaliers trying to snap that losing streak first and goal to go back ahead if they could punch it in my goodness oh my goodness I got goosebumps Perkins will look to run it himself inside the five down to the four 
This is Bryce Perkins' time. We know about him on the ground, but those last three drives, we've seen him through the air. He told me last year he was running around just trying to make plays. This offseason, he went deep into film study and his upper body mechanics. I'll tell you what, Virginia Tech has loaded the box, and Bryce Perkins has feasted. What a player from Arizona State to a career threatening neck injury to junior college here to Charlottesville where he has been a huge part of this program's turnaround trying for a breakthrough win. Second a goal. Perkins hands it off to Alapapa and a penalty flag was thrown right near the line of scrimmage. A gain of a yard or two. I think we've got uh, some type of movement violation. By Virginia. Some sort of illegal shift. The receiver started to move towards the line of scrimmage before the ball illegal was Illegal motion. Offense number eight. Five yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, and Dubois just made the, the big time play. But you watch him come down here in motion, and he's going to start towards the line of scrimmage a little too early. Hmm. That's a that's a tough call right yeah. there. I you know and our our angle is not quite the same as the line judge, but that that's a tough call. I get let's look at the positive. It gives uh, it gives Bryce a little bit more a little more room to work with here. Okay, <laughs> a little more cushion. On second and goal. Yeah, just inside the ten. Under nine minutes to go in Charlottesville. Hokies lead by three. A wild second half. Perkins. Gonna run one on one. Can he beat his man? The answer is no. Dax Hollifield was right there and shoved him out of bounds. That is a tremendous open field tackle by Dax Hollifield. This guy right here was one of the most celebrated high school players in the country. And to be able to bring down a guy like Bryce Perkins one on one in the open field, that's why he was so celebrated. Look at him. Look at the discipline. Doesn't cross over, stays balanced, keeps his head up. Really a tremendous open field tackle by Dax. Third and goal. Kemp comes in motion. Perkins in the pocket. Now scrambling. Perkins gets hit and goes down. You can just hear the crowd when he starts to go anticipate the run. He wanted to hang in there and throw the ball. In the end, he takes the sack, and Virginia's going to try for a field goal to tie the game. He's got nowhere to run, you know, with, with Dax sitting back there, with Ashby sitting back there, and they're using two guys to spy him. A uh, Virginia Tech player is down. Hollyfield is limping around. We'll take a quick a, an extra point after Bryce Perkins' first touchdown of the day. Brian Delaney, the junior from Chantilly, Virginia, an in-state kid, part of this rivalry. And now Delaney trots on the field with under eight minutes to go, 7.54 to be precise. 17 to 21 field goal kicking on the year. This one almost like an extra point from the left hash mark, 25 yards to tie the game. You think he's thinking about that uh, missed PAT? I would be, but I'm not Brian. Snap and hold, kick is good. Well, he punched that through. He did. He wasn't thinking about it. And that's a good sign because this is the kind of game that feels like it's coming down to a kick yeah. or some play late. Well, the Hokies use the big pass play and then the right foot of their junior place kicker, Brian Delaney, to tie the game up. Bronco Mendenhall, who has put so much on this one, this program has taken all kinds of steps. They need this step, though, to beat the Hokies in a rivalry game. 30 to 30, let's check in with Kevin Nagandi in studio. Dave, Jim, and now... For your today's All-State Mayhem moment, we're taking you to Lincoln, Iowa, looking to extend their win streak against Nebraska to five. And how about the reverse? On the board first, Amir Smith-Marset, 45 yards. Nate Stanley escorting him down the sidelines. Iowa up 14-3. to three. Getting you ready now. Big game for the American next on ABC. Michael Warren in Cincinnati. A win today against Memphis, meaning the Bearcats would host the American Championship game. Back to Dave, Jim, and Paul. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. 
Memphis, tremendous on offense, but do not underestimate the Cincinnati defense. I got to, when we did a game earlier, yep. they, they are tremendous on defense. They're fun to watch. Versus. These two teams have been really good on defense for most of the year, but it's been the offenses here in Charlottesville that have taken over this rivalry game. Robinson outside the 20, yet smothered. The ball came out. It's still out. And I think that was King, not Robinson. He, he may well have been down. Yeah, they're spotting it at the 20, the side. Moving on the field as the runner was down. First down, Virginia Tech. So they ruled him down. Now, Virginia thinks they came up with the football. That was King. Was he down? Yeah, yeah he was definitely down. Good ruling on the field. That's all right. Strip that ball and make him think about it next time. <laughs> That's what you want on defense. You're always going after the ball. Covering a kick, always going after the ball. So the Hokies with the ball back. The winner will play Clemson for the ACC championship next weekend. If Virginia Tech wins, it'll be 16 in a row. Virginia has never played in that conference championship game. A straight ahead run for Deshaun McLeese. A nice first down game for the Hokies. Yeah, another first down run that, that gains good yardage, open things up for Virginia Tech on defense. I'm sorry, on offense. That's what they need to do. They don't have to be any type of hurry here. Just take your time, be deliberate, run the ball, let your quarterback run a little bit. Maybe take a shot downfield when you get single coverage. Second and one. Play fake on that fly sweep. Hooker, the quarterback, straight ahead run for a Virginia Tech first down. We've said it several times in this game, but I think it's worth repeating. This Hendon Hooker, this is his seventh start. Virginia Tech is 6 0 since he took over as the starting quarterback in the games that he has actually started, been healthy enough to start. He has still not thrown an interception this year. That says a lot. Tremendous decision maker. Off McLeese right side, big opener and cuts it middle, then back to the sideline into Virginia territory. Deshaun McLeese has had a big second half. Well, they get the edge here on the outside run, the little outside zone, well, actually, a little counter play. They seal the edge, tremendous job by Hazleton on the edge, getting a block, and then a good run. And this is going to really help Virginia Tech just establishing this first down run. It just opens up everything for you. Play fake, Hooker will throw left side and is dropped. Turner had his hands on it, incomplete. I should correct myself because Hooker did throw the Hail Mary interception. Yeah. I mean, it counts. But if you want to count that, I mean, I, I'm not going to count that against him. At I, the end of the first half, he just heaved one up yeah. toward the goal line, and it was intercepted. So that officially his first interception right. of the year. But when we when we talked to him, and someone made the comment, you know, you seem like you're very careful with the football. He said, no, 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 I'm not overly careful. You know, I'm going to still sling it in there, and I'm not going to shy away from making plays. But he's a good decision maker with the ball in his hands, both in the run game and the pass game. Second and ten, Virginia Tech. Keen, the tight end in motion, and Virginia Tech moved. They moved early. Yeah, the center needs to get that ball up. Ball start, offense, number 52. Five-yard penalty, second down. Back to Hooker for, for a minute. You know, when you talk about quarterbacks and decision-making, you're typically talking about the pass game and throwing it into the right spot at the right time, not making silly decisions down the field. But when you watch him operate their offense in the run game, whether to give or to keep, he's also a tremendous decision-maker there. And, and it's evidence in the success that he's had, 6-0, and as you said, as a starter. Second and long after the penalty for Hooker and the Virginia Tech offense. Handoff, McLeese got back to the line, that's it. Eskin Smith, Charles Snowden, Virginia's defense is in a good position here with under six to play. Charlottesville. Third and 15. And they, they moved early again. I thought so. The flag came very late. Nobody could hear the whistle. That was another false start by Virginia Tech. Snap infraction. Off 
defense, number 61. Five round penalty. Third down. And to your point, this time they actually called it against the center. They might have been able to call it against the center right. the previous time. I thought so. Well, now if you're Justin Fuentes and you're facing a, a third and 20 at this point in the field, what do you do? You know, conventional wisdom would say you throw it, you run it, and you, you punt it. But I'll tell you what, a, a, a deep ball, a deep throw down the sideline where maybe you get the P.I. or even if you get an interception, it's like a punt. That's not a bad idea either. Let's see, third and 19. Hooker in the pocket, and those receivers are going down the field. This one is intercepted. Picked off. That's the first real interception of the year thrown by Hendon Hooker. And Noah Taylor, the linebacker, back in coverage, comes up with it. Noah Taylor. Noah Taylor is an outside linebacker who's six foot five, and they have no problem because of his athleticism playing him in space. And watch him here. Watch him get some depth. He gets the reroute, the depth, and then watch him stretch out to get that interception. That's a six five man working in space. Tremendous. I've talked about these linebackers all day and their versatility. Great example over there. Remember now, he started the game with a sack. Yeah. And now he's got a pick. Of all of them, maybe he's had the best game of oh, those yeah. Virginia linebackers. Can Virginia march down the field and take a lead in this rivalry game? A pass to Reed who slips a tackle. Joe Reed upfield with that forward momentum got close just a little bit short. It'll be second and a half a yard. I, li I like that play, and I'll tell you why I like it. It gets it out of Bryce's hands quickly, and you get it into Reed's hand know because of his kick return ability is a tremendous open field runner he will make some plays taking a short catch and turn it into something long second and a yard approaching four minutes to go Virginia 30 Virginia Tech 30 with the winner playing for an ACC championship Perkins throws that slant to Hill with the catch First down Cavaliers into Virginia Tech territory down to the 46 yard line that right there. Okay, that's Bryce Perkins game catch it get rid of it quick on inside throws. We got we got uh, Joe Reed limping off the field that could be significant, but this is what Virginia does best catch it and throw it or let Perkins run it. Well, move the tight end to Cowley into the backfield Perkins kept it Bryce Perkins left side running got shoved out of bounds good play by divine Diablo gain of a yard really good play they were trying to get Cowley the tight end on the edge to get that to seal it and he couldn't get there so another under four minutes to go and the clock winds for the Cavaliers into Virginia Tech territory trying to snap a 15 game rivalry losing streak it's what people around here have been thinking about for more than a decade. Second and nine for Bryce Perkins and UVA. He will keep it. Spin away. Perkins. First down goes out of bounds. He held that ball for so long and finally pulled it back and made that little spin move. That was a little game of tug of war there. And what he did by holding it as long is that he forced Virginia Tech's defense to collapse and then Jan on the outside getting a nice block so we'd like to be a little bit more decisive with who has the ball but in that case it worked out perfectly and Virginia is getting very close to field goal range and they want to take their time here Virginia Tech has all three timeouts so do the Cavaliers and such a well played game in second half little slate with that quickness penalty flag thrown he got a gain inside the 30 and a nice gain on first down but this one may be coming back that's a holding offense number 55 10 yard penalty take down oh that one hurts those are those are tough ones you know you get a positive play that's a safe play well, the sophomore center Olawa Timmy Number 55, 
Yeah, it didn't have effect on the play, but it was definitely a hold. You grab someone's helmet like that, throw them down, they're going to call it. This, this the is clock a tough start one. on the snap. First down. He's probably been Virginia's best offensive lineman, but that puts yeah. the Cavaliers in a pickle. First and 18. And back outside of field goal position. Tie game, final three minutes in Charlottesville. Perkins in the pocket with time. Over the top, Dubois incomplete. Virginia cannot believe there wasn't a flag throw maybe because the ball wasn't catchable well it wasn't catchable because <laughs> it's a chicken or egg question yeah, was a question was it catchable got, only because of the hold yeah I mean he got he gets jacked up right there Connor definitely yeah, grabbed he's got it. a hold of his jersey there's no way to get of course it's uncatchable and generally Boy. that's just generally that's just an automatic call. Uh, that's that's a that's a tough no call right there for Virginia I don't I, somebody's got to see that even if it's the somebody it's saw the it. official behind the yeah. play he just decided not to throw maybe he didn't have he, back to might not have had a good angle field judge I don't know but you get you got to call that so second and 18 huh. Perkins will run it and Virginia Tech got him to the ground down to the 40 tremendous job by Belmar there of what you teach your pass rushers is, is you get to the level of the quarterback okay and then you start to throttle down and work back or work inside you start to go up the field past price Perkins and he's going to get out and give it too much a lane but right there Belmar just settled at the depth of the quarterback was able to work back and make a nice play because there was some room as we saw up the left sideline I mean this is huge can Virginia somehow get into field goal range at minimum they have to almost get the first down to get there Charge timeout, Virginia. And UVA is going to use their first, first timeout in the second half. 30 seconds. Well, Brian Delaney has had an up and down kind of day. The uh, junior place kicker for the Cavaliers. Extra point early. He hooked it wide left. No good. But the tying pressure field goal just a few minutes ago was right on through. And he's got a big leg. Brian Delaney's career long came this year, 49 yards. So he's got range out to 50 or so, maybe even a little bit farther than that. This is where the head coach, there are a lot of scenarios that have to be going through Bronco Mendenhall's head right now. If we get this, what are we going to do? Would right. we go for it this part of the field? Would we you know, try I think, a long field goal? I, I think if they get to the 30 or inside the 30, and it's a 47, 48-yard field goal, you probably kick it. Although if you've got a fourth and two, if somehow they can pick up 12 or 13 yards here, 11, 12 yards here, maybe you do go for it. I don't know. It's uh, I know one thing. You don't want to give Virginia Tech the ball back with decent field position. We know for sure if you punt it, if we don't want to get in here. Third and 16. Out of the timeout. Perkins. In the pocket throws, and that one completed fairly short. Now pushing forward and shoved out of bounds almost to that spot that you were talking about. Down to the 31, and the field goal team is running out on the field. Brian Delaney, here's your chance. I like that Bronco Mendenhall was decisive. There was no hesitation. We're gonna, what are we going to do? Hey, field goal. Now, if you're a kicker, you love that confidence that your coach is showing in you. And, and this kid's got confidence. That last kick, boom, he popped it right through. But it's a little bit different now. This could be for the game. Be very close to his career long. Officially 48-yard try for the junior Brian Delaney from the state of Virginia. The kick is on its way. And it is good! seconds away from staffing what has been a 15 year nightmare losing streak to their in-state rivals and advancing to their first ACC championship game. The play call before they set it up for Brian Delaney and he boomed it through. And I think what you said about the game tying field goal he kicked it it was much shorter yeah. but it was a very confident kick and Bryce Perkins thrilled with his place kicker 33 30 Cavaliers back in front obvious by the play call on third down that Bronco yep. Mendenhall had confidence yep. in his kicker 
obvious. And obvious that he won it on the left hash. And that's where the kicker, he hit the, he, Delaney hit the, the previous kick from the left hash. Kickers typically like that left hash. That was just beautiful late game execution. Situational football, third and 16 to set it up for the next play, and it worked. Now can the Virginia defense hold on for a win? They're going to pooch that kick short. It's going to be taken, and the stumble. The return man went down inside the 20, so that worked out beautifully for Virginia. Coming down the home stretch here in Charlottesville first. Let's get another update with Kevin in studio. Guys, Kenneth Gainwell, Memphis, they can clinch the American West with a victory today. Cincinnati can host the American Championship game if they get a win on the road. Big matchup ahead for Memphis. Catch the start of that game if our current game goes long over on ESPNU. All right. The winner advancing to the ACC championship. The win streak on the line. Maybe an Orange Bowl berth on the line. Worst starting field position for the Hokies all game. They need at least three to keep the game going. Hendon Hooker will start to scramble. Hooker is going down. Lost a couple yards getting sacked on first down. Zane Sandier, part of that linebacker core. Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech decides to use their first time out just to save as much time as they can. The linebackers have made a lot of big plays all year for the Cavaliers, and that was a big one from Sandier. Yeah, it started with coverage downfield, really good coverage. All right, so here we are, Jim, with everything at stake in this rivalry game, the pressure, the weight of the 15-year losing streak for this Virginia team. Bronco Mendenhall told us this week that he thought his team was ready. I mean, it was a confident head coach, and I think he's coach confident. That last sequence, there are a lot of head coaches in college football who do not handle that the way that he handled it, and it worked out to perfection because they get the field goal to take the lead. Well, players are going to feed off their head coach, and he's shown great confidence. He showed great confidence in the kicker. He hasn't flinched on the sidelines, and his team's playing that way. Second and 12. The pressure came immediately. They didn't block Eli Anback. And in fact, that was Matt Gam, who was sort of stacked up with Anback, who gets the sack. Another timeout for Virginia Tech. The Hokies are going backwards. Matt Gam made a really big third down stop in the third quarter. And then this sack here. I mean, they don't block him. And, and, you know, Virginia does some unconventional things in their pass rush and bringing linebackers and bringing defensive backs. And right there, they confuse the left tackle. And, uh, and they got the sack off of it. You saw, you saw just a nice scheme with zone play behind it. This place just is ready to lose its mind. You don't want to play it too soft here because they have to go for it on third, fourth down. And you don't want it to be a fourth and short where the quarterback can run it. Third and 21 from the end zone. Hooker. The 15-year wait is almost over. It's a minute and one from being over. What a great play. And, of course, Jordan Mack, the man in the middle. 
comes up with the fumble recovery for the touchdown. Oh, my. Get out of the way if you're down there on the field in a minute and a second. Now that is a penalty against the Cavaliers. It doesn't matter. Delay of game doesn't matter. Shouldn't matter. The play that essentially has ended Virginia Tech's winning streak in this rivalry. I think Alonzo was a guy who poked it out. Mack and Handback were both there. Two seniors playing their last game in Charlottesville. Well, Handback got it. You know what? Hats off to him. Four years, he's never missed a game. What Eli Handback. What a start. Virginia trying to get organized and uh, are they going for two? No. They are. Well, they, up nine, I guess they're figuring it doesn't get to 11, nine or much matter. Oh, and in fact, they're not going for anything. They don't want to risk a block. He don't want to risk a block and return to make it so. I'll tell you what, that's smart football. Bronco, way to go, baby. So 50 plus seconds. Uh, clock. <laughs> what do you think it means to that guy? Well, we, we're seeing what it means. The look on his face there as he celebrated. He, now he was a go, let's go for one, but he was celebrating. I love it. Please reset the game clock to 55 seconds. Five, five. It's just no fun. It's an in-state rival, and you hear it from the people that you live with, you go to work with, you're friends with, not just for a year or a couple of years. For the Virginia people, they have heard it for 15 straight years from the Hokies fans. And they're about to give it back. And every Virginia fan in the state is going to say, yeah, I was there. I was there when we broke the streak. I would think it's safe to say that Bryce Perkins has cemented his legacy here at Virginia. You talk about a guy who comes in and in two years, along with you know, Bronco and these other seniors, puts this, this program on a path to have the success they're having today. He's an unconventional quarterback who's given them a chance to, you know, recruit, cover up some of their deficiencies. But uh, what an impact he's had. That might be the first high step that Bronco Medellin yeah. has ever done down the sideline in his long, distinguished coaching career. There are a lot of people who thought this was a strange fit for a guy who spent his whole life, basically, in the Rocky Mountains and west of that. I think all that's over. Good ball coaches are good ball coaches. They can adjust. They can adapt. They can communicate with different types of young men. He's a stud. He is a good ball coach. Another one of those pooch kickoffs. And it's going to go out of bounds. Virginia almost recovered that. He did. So the last minute here for the Hokies to try somehow to get down the field as fast as possible, see if they can get a score on the board, onside kick it. I mean, the chances are almost down to zero. Well, but it's not officially over, so Justin Fuente will send his offense back on the field. I'm telling my corners, do not get in bump and run. Do not look into the backfield. Do not guess. Stay deep. Hooker will throw. And I, for Virginia, that's fine, right? That's fine for Virginia. Hazelton with the catch, stepped out of bounds. Didn't take long. First down, Virginia Tech to the 44-yard line. Just don't get beat over the top. Don't put yourself in a position where there's a chance for pass interference down the field. That's what you've got to make sure you don't do if you're Virginia's defense. Hooker gets hit, hit so hard, and driven backwards. Famui with the sack. I guess Virginia Tech uses its final timeout. Six sacks for this Virginia defense. Cincinnati into the house. The Tigers are already on the board. Off
the opening kick. That game coming to ABC after things wrap up in Charlottesville. Back to the guys. All right, Kevin, thank you. Things are about to wrap up. Virginia has waited a long, long time for this moment. Hooker across the middle. Complete to Robinson into Virginia territory. The clock will stop on a Hokies first down. 41 seconds to play. But the lead for the Cavaliers after the defensive touchdown is nine. Hooker takes a snap again. And Hooker's going to heave it down the right sideline into coverage, but a jump catch by Trey Turner inside the 10. So hold off that celebration, at least for a few more moments. It was never just going to be easy no. for the Cavaliers. Never. First and goal. And the Hooker will fumble it and pick it up and spike it down, and the penalty flags are thrown. So I think Justin Fuente is trying to figure out what just happened. There was a little mishandle. Illegal forward pass against the offense. Number two, five-yard penalty. Lost it down. This also has a 10-second draft. So the 10 second runoff is huge as a part of that. One of the problems when you're a shotgun team, you never get under center. A situation like this happens, you're not used to being there. Most significant thing though, Dave, is that 10 second yep. runoff. So now basically you got to score here. And then maybe you would have two plays. You're reaching. If, yeah, I'm reaching. Hey, let's, sure. let's enjoy the, enjoy the Virginia <laughs> victory here. Second and goal. Virginia Tech trying to at least make him sweat here these final few seconds. Hooker to the end zone, incomplete. And now the clock all the way down to four. Yeah, that, 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 that did not take but nine seconds, I didn't think. Well, they they let the clock run to, I think, to about nine before they even snapped it. All right. So this will likely, likely, be the final play. They're getting ready to go after their head coach. Hooker toward the end zone, incomplete. Game over. Here they come. They waited 15 years for this, and now we get to watch them celebrate. 